Uh, today, I'm going to uh, show you uh, a few data concerning the surveillance center in terms of uh, cases examined, uh, how we, uh, we are performing in terms of uh, really providing the information necessary on how many cases and what kind of diseases occur in the United States, prion diseases occur in the United States. But also I would like to show you a few uh, data concerning uh, new, uh, new tests that we perform at the uh, uh, National Prion Disease Pathology Surveillance Center. As you know, um, these are the goals of the uh, US National Prion Disease Pathology Surveillance Center. Is a slightly different approach, it would, uh, actually would say a different approach that our center um, uh, has adopted as compared to European or other centers, that is, we are really dealing with cases in which were all proven to be a prion disease by tissue analysis. So we, we are all dealing with confirmed cases and in the great, great majority also characterized as for uh, the uh, type whether they were, or form, whether they were sporadic or uh, familial and by history acquired and, uh, <coughs> and also the subtypes of the cases in the great, great majority because we get frozen tissue from virtually um, um, for about 90% uh, of the cases. So <coughs> here are the numbers. Um, that we, we uh, get and I don't know, maybe again my, or well, maybe he, ah, yeah. I tell you, it's very challenging this. Uh. <laughs> Here are the numbers of the cases that we received and <laughs> Rather than showing you the big table with all the numbers, I, I, I focused only on the last three years. And here you have the total number of cases that were, again, examined by tissue analysis by the center. And you can notice that uh, despite the diminishing funding and maybe the diminished interest or fear of prion disease is still we uh, are able to perform tissue examination in always this more or less the same if not slightly increasing number of, uh, of cases. And here are the positive cases and the uh, negative and then the percentage of uh, negative cases and you can see more or less is the same maybe slightly, very slightly decreasing. In addition to tissue, so the number of autopsies that we are able, or tissue examination we are able to perform, remains pretty much steady, if not slightly increasing. In addition to um, um, tissue examination, we also provide 1433 and tau tests on CSF. And these are the number of, uh, uh, total number of CSF samples that we received from all over the United States. And you can see this is also more or less uh, stable around 30,000, uh, 30,000, uh, 3,000 samples a year. Again, here the great majority are negative. Remember, this comes from all the cases in the United States in which the physician have even the slightest suspicion that is dealing with the case of uh, uh, prion disease. And here are the positive cases that we get again, maybe increasing a little bit, but more or less on the uh, 700 or so, about uh, 
uh, 23% uh, or so. Now, just incidentally, um, Jeff Negri, present here, there, he's the one who calls all the caregivers in these positive cases and try uh, uh, initially talking to the caregiver and eventually uh, to also the family to arrange for an autopsy. So most of these cases are all the positive cases and also the ambiguous cases are investigated. And an autopsy, whenever is possible, is obtained. That will explain uh, the relatively high number of autopsies that you see here, that we have 88%. Assuming this 88% of the cases expected in the United States are autopsies, assume that there is one per million prevalence of uh, prion disease in the United States. But as was shown by, by Bob Will, is probably also in the United States, probably the number is higher. So this uh, probably is more than one per million, probably more like 1.1, 1.2 per million. So this actually may be an optimistic number. Recently, that is as of January, as of January uh, 2014, we have started to perform RT Quick on all the positive cases uh, all the cases that are positive for uh, uh, 1433 and or tau. And these is, are the number that we have examined so far and, uh, and, and the number of positive cases. So a uh, couple of words on uh, RT Quick, also that um, you have seen already uh, uh, several uh, speakers have shown the principle and, uh, and the data. Here again, uh, the principle, again, there is a very minute amount of uh, uh, peer scrapy PRP, that is the abnormal disease-related PRP, in the CSF of CJD-affected patients. And an amount that is so small that cannot be detected by all the directly detected by all methods that are used, like Western blot and so on. So the only way is to increase this amount using it as a C, uh, sorry, using it as a as a seed. So and you add adding to it normal. PRP, or what we call PRP-C, cellular PRP. So this um, interact, the, the normal PRP interact with the abnormal one to the, uh, to the one that is aggregated and increases that amount. So there is conversion here and then expansion until when the amount originally present after expansion or amplification is detectable with, uh, with a, a, a dye and we generate a, a fluorescence. So that is the principle. You have to increase the amount artificially in vitro by incubation to detect, to detect this minute amount that is present <coughs> and could not be detected previously could not be detected previously. So this is the principle. And, uh, and here is the, an image that you have seen already um, in, uh, in, pre uh, in uh, previous slides, uh, in the slide presented by previous speakers, the various curve indicating that the, present, the presence of normal PRP. Here is the uh, from brain homogenate. These instead are all from positive CSF. And these are the, is the baseline that you have with the no negative cases or controls. 
So here are the results. If we don't and we cannot repeat the test, all the negative tests, as many investigators do, uh, because it will be extremely expensive, we have about 55% uh, sensitivity. So uh, on this material, very difficult to uh, you miss the presence of, uh, of uh, abnormal PRP in several cases. That's why, as compared especially to 1433 and Tau, which have a, a much higher sensitivity. So we use, we use very much this to, uh, to complement the data here. Specificity, instead, as you can see, uh, also that you've seen from other uh, presenters here before, is very, very high, close to 100%. So that means that is when we get a positive result, we are, all, we are over 99% sure uh, that, that the case is indeed uh, positive and it has CJD. So that is a very, very helpful uh, in the diagnosis. <coughs> and uh, more lately, more recently, we have uh, worked together with uh, uh, several people, but uh, especially Claudio Soto, to uh, use an, another system that amplifies the original abnormal premium protein but is much more powerful, called uh, PMCA, <coughs> that, uh, that <coughs> as you can see here, based on the same principle as RT-Quick, but more powerful. At the same time, has a drawback that takes much more time. So it's not really ready as a diagnostic test, but can be used in special cases. Now, the results <coughs> in uh, Claudio Soto's studies is that this test, which is, which is performing uh, in urine, has a very, very reliable, as you can see, 19, he has 92.9 sensitivity, 100% specificity. Uh, for the diagnosis of variant CJD in urine. So it seems to be at this stage, although the a number of cases examined are, are very few, and uh, many, most of them were provided by uh, Bob Will, Richard Knight, the group of uh, um, uh, the UK, and uh, but based on, uh, on this preliminary data, it looks like it's a very powerful test to diagnose uh, on urine variant CJD. On the contrary, is, uh, does not help in uh, uh, diagnosing, it doesn't help in diagnosis sporadic CJD. And, uh, as you can see here, 68 cases of sporadic CJD were examined, urine, eh? we are talking about urine, and were negative. Still, the, the jury is out for, this, for the conclusion that uh, urine may be negative in sporadic CJD because it's easy, variant CJD abnormal prion protein is easier to amplify with PMCA than the sporadic one. So it's not, the method is not so efficient for the sporadic, for the presence of the abnormal prion protein in the urine of the sporadic, as is for the variant CJD. But for the variant CJD, it seems to be very reliable. <coughs> and. Uh, Finally, all the people who really contributed enormously to uh, the surveillance, actually are the ones running, the really running the surveillance, and all the people that uh, have supported the surveillance center 
uh, over the years. Thank you very much.